Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. You can't fight what you can't see. This was the concept that eventually led to the invention of the military submarine in the early 1900s. By World War I and II, submarine fleets were among the most feared combatants in the ocean. Able to strike boats unseen and then flee to the depths before their victims could return fire. In response, navies worldwide needed to develop new weapons and tactics to deal with the underwater threat. Because they can patrol friendly and hostile waters from above, it wasn't long before helicopters and other aircraft joined the hunt for enemy submarines. In these cases, one of the most vital weapons is not a weapon at all, but a detection tool known as a sono buoy. Sono buoys are small, expendable acoustic sensor devices that can be deployed into the water to detect and track underwater sounds, particularly those produced by submarines or other underwater threats. Over the years, they have become an essential tool of anti-submarine warfare allowing single ships and sometimes entire fleets to create a detection grid around themselves, making it extremely difficult for enemy subs to infiltrate the surrounding waters undetected. Sono buoys are deployed from aircraft, but can also be used by ships in some situations. The process involves flying low over the water and releasing one or more sono buoys in specific regions of the ocean. When released, the parachute slows the descent of the sono buoy into the water to avoid damaging the sensitive electronics inside. Once the buoy makes contact with the water, its sensors activate, allowing it to begin listening for acoustic signals. At the same time, the buoy will begin transmitting real-time data back to the ship. This information is then analyzed by trained professionals who can determine the presence, location, and movements of submarines or other underwater threats. By deploying multiple sono buoys at different locations, operators can triangulate the position of a target and track its movements. Island nations like Japan are particularly susceptible to seaborne threats and take the patrolling of their national waters extremely seriously. This eventually led to the development of the Kawasaki P-1 Maritime Patrol Aircraft. A long-range surveillance and anti-submarine plane first introduced in 2013. At 124 feet long and boasting a 116-foot wingspan, the P-1 resembles a passenger plane more than a military aircraft. However, it boasts a number of features that make it extremely deadly to any enemy sub. 
for starters. It boasts an incredible 5,000 mile range, which allows the P1 to stay aloft for hours at a time, reducing the chances a ship might slip through its defenses. It carries more than 30 sono buoys in chambers built into the fuselage and another 70 inside the aircraft itself. This, coupled with the plane's advanced sensor suite, allows the P-1 to see threats from hundreds of miles away. Upon detecting such a threat, the plane can use a variety of missiles bombs, and depth charges to engage the submarine from the air. While not an island, the United States has nearly 100,000 miles of coastline that needs to be protected. For decades, the country has relied on the Lockheed P-3 Orion to perform surveillance and anti-submarine warfare duties. That said, running a single patrol sortie involves dozens of people and a variety of expensive equipment. Like the P-1, the P-3 is relatively larger, measuring 116 feet long. The latter carries a crew of 11. However, most of which are tasked with monitoring the aircraft's extensive sensor suite. After takeoff, the P-1 can stay aloft for up to 17 hours at a time dropping buoys and investigating any strange signals they might detect. Though sono buoys are incredibly effective, they are by no means a permanent solution for patrolling the seas. Though the batteries inside can last for some time, they will eventually die out and render the buoy useless. This has led many militaries to begin experimenting with unmanned underwater sonar vehicles, sometimes called sea drones. These robotic, submersible devices are specifically designed to utilize sonar for underwater surveying or data collection. Though they can be controlled remotely, most also feature an autonomous function whereby they can patrol the seas for potential threats. Depending on their design, some underwater sonar vehicles can stay at sea for months at a time, covering an extensive distance for purposes of either defense or espionage. These innovative vehicles fall under a larger category of tools, known as AUVs, or Autonomous Underwater Vehicles. Though they can differ quite a bit depending on the design, AUVs generally resemble a torpedo and function more or less the same way. The front will contain all the necessary navigation equipment while the body contains a series of battery or fuel packs, as well as communication gear. In the rear, there will be a propulsion mechanism of some kind, along with fins to control direction. Companies like Ocean Server Technologies designed AUVs capable of serving a wide variety of purposes from scientific exploration to threat detection and more. 
This versatility is a crucial part of what makes AUVs such a good investment for militaries with needs that can change from day to day. For instance, when Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 disappeared in 2014, a number of countries participated in a major search and rescue operation. During this process, the US Navy deployed its Bluefin 21 AUV in an attempt to help locate any debris that might indicate what happened to the plane. Using its side-scanning sonar capabilities, the Bluefin 21 spent up to 16 hours at a time at depths of up to 4,000 meters, hoping to catch a glimpse of the plane. In the end, it took several months for debris identified as belonging to MH370 to be found along the eastern coast of Africa. Unfortunately, there is still no indication of what caused the crash. Though submarines remain integral to many naval fleets, they are far more dangerous than standard vessels. For instance, because they spend most of their time under the surface of the water, the logistics of rescuing a stranded or trapped submarine crew are far more complex. In order to reduce the number of casualties from submarine incidents, various countries have collaborated on what's called the NATO Submarine Rescue System. The system mainly consists of a submarine rescue vehicle. This specialized submersible can attach to the escape hatch of a distressed submarine, allowing for the transfer of crew members to the surface without exposing them to hazardous pressure changes. If a submersible rescue is not feasible, the NATO system can also use a special submarine rescue chamber. The chamber can be lowered to depths of up to 850 feet, carrying emergency responders down to a stranded sub where it can again mate with the submarine's hatch, providing a pressurized environment for recovering personnel. When the chamber comes into contact with a flat surface, the crew inside can create a water and airtight seal. Various types of chambers have been used for decades to perform similar tasks, and they all boast slightly similar designs. The chamber features a hatch at the top and a shaft at the bottom. Unfortunately, the fact that the SRC is unpowered makes it susceptible to currents and rough seas, which can delay rescues significantly. Regardless of the equipment used, a submarine rescue is no simple operation. In this case, Teams from the NATO fleet use a specialized submersible to perform a mock rescue of a submarine crew. Once the rescue module makes contact with the submarine, they can begin pumping the water out of the area between their hatch and the submarine hatch. The rescuer can then deploy a rope ladder into the chamber and safely open the hatch of the sub. Because the module is pressurized, rescuers and submarine personnel can move back and forth without worrying about health risks. 
The party can then take the submersible back to the surface, where it will be retrieved by the boat. Some navies also have specialized suits that allow for individual submarine escapes. After donning these suits, they can flood a chamber of the sub and exit out of the ship's missile tubes. However, to maximize safety, those crew members who escape this way must be placed directly into a decompression chamber. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.